So Steve, what is your preferred rock to find a fossil in? None of them. Okay, let's go through them. So what we got to do is cut away of a sort of cliff that the student did for us. So what we got here, shales, limestones, mudstone. You see the, the limestone stick out more because actually in the cliff, mudstones are much softer, so they erode away much quicker. So these stand out in prominence, okay? Mm -hmm. So to collect fossils, so you get two types of limestone. You get like a very hard limestone, like a dolomitic limestone. If you find a fossil in, it's really difficult to prepare. It takes okay. a long, long time. In other limestones, we get like laminated coccolis limestones. It's rather like the chalk form, so they're in very thin layers. Reasonably soft, so it's, it's very easy to sort of prepare, so that's yeah. quite nice. Okay. Mudstones, normally the fossils are pretty sort of 3D in them. They're not, not crushed flat. And... We, to remove those is just extract the mudstone and they just sort of pop out so that's not a problem. Yeah. Some of the shales which are really good because we get lots and lots of fish and goodness knows what on those. Mm -hmm. Just a matter of cutting around that and preparing those. So there's not any preferred things that we can deal with them all but each one takes a different sort of angle to sort of clean them. Maybe a different tool or... Yeah a different yeah. tool or whatever yeah. okay but Basically, it, it sort of cameras. That's what we get: the three types: limestones, shales, and mudstones. But each one's different characteristics, but they're quite simple to deal with, really. If, if, if repairing material, mm -hmm. it's not a not a problem. So, Steve, if you found, say, a crocodile, what would you prefer it in? In a mudstone, because I take it all out, bit bone by bone, and then clean it and put it back together again. We can make a, you know, hang the thing up like you see T. Rex done. Yeah. Uh, in a shale, it'll all be in a shale, so you just cut the slabs out and it'll be how it died. That'd be put quite back crushed together. in that shale. Some of it, yeah, yeah, because yeah. we've got an ichthyosaur soil over there that's semi crushed, it's not crushed dead flat, mm. but that's dead easy to deal with. So, yeah. um, if it's in a limestone, well, logistically it'll be a massive problem because of the weight of it. You think mm. limestones, oh, some of these are this thick, yeah. just to reduce that down would take an immense amount of time. So, yeah. So mudstones and, and shales would be the preferable one. Mm. And we don't really get any vertebrate fossils hardly at all in these limestones. I suppose Very that's rarely. A really heavy to take off the beach yeah, as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at Kimmeridge, there's a lot of pyrite, iron up, you know, fool's gold. Yes, mm -hmm. it's in every fossil yeah. we collect, but what's unique about here is most people don't like pyrite. It's the bane of museum curator's life. But we keep our material here in quite low, in other words, 40% relative humidity. Why don't they like fool's it. gold pyrite? Because it, it degrades. So pyrite has got sulfuric acid in it. And through, we now know, in high moisture sort of thing, yeah. it degrades. Yeah. Years ago, they used to think that pyrite decay was caused by a bacteria. So they used to put like stuff like Savlon, which is like those antiseptic oh, creams. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it didn't work. So and then, when it goes like green, it will bubble and go It green. goes all green and yellow. And actually the sulfuric acid comes out of suspension and eats away the rock it's in. So you end up with just a pile of white dust. And the label and everything gets destroyed as well. I found that humidity is the factor that preserves it. So the lower the humidity is going to yeah. preserve it longer. Let's put it this way. For the last 40 years I've collected my material, I've kept it to a humidity of about 40%. We've not lost anything through pyrite decay. Some of the fossils we get sometimes do crack, but yeah. that's through, which is something we can't explain, but the, the, the material it's in, especially if it's crushed bone, tends to expand and crack. But once that's done it, it normally, that's it as far yeah. as it sort of goes. So people don't like pyrite for the reason being that it, an unstable metalliferous mineral. But here, you get excellent preservation in pyrite. Um, and I find it's quite stable. A lot of this material, even if it's not kept in those conditions we keep it in, still preserves. It's some of the ones that do tend to degrade. We know which ones do, yeah. but we keep them all into that same humidity. And it's, as I say, time, you know, it's been the sort of proof that we're doing That's the right thing. Much, yeah. That's all we've got for you today from the Etches Collection. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more, and hopefully we'll see you next time.